Hello everyone, welcome to Shri Voyage. Today we're going to be going over, you might have guessed, lesson six, the goddess bride. This look will be focused on the eyes and creating a jewel toned look. So let's go ahead and jump into creating the goddess bride. Now the goddess bride sits within the same family as the glam bride, which is a video that I just did and I will link that down below for you guys. Think of this though more towards jewel tones. This type of look is what I do quite consistently on brides that are from India or someone who is looking for a very kind of Bollywood style bride. Where I think of glam bride as Hollywood, I think of the goddess bride as Bollywood. So we're going to be doing a lot of bright colors. This is definitely more focused on creating big, beautiful eyes. I'm going to do a cut crease and pop a lot of shimmer in the middle. And the focus is going to be right here. The rest is going to be much more subdued as we head down the face, but the focus is really on creating gorgeous eyes. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I already have my moisturizer on. It's the Chanel 10 day Chanel moisturizer. I have my PTR patches on. These are so good. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started on this goddess bride look. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the eyeshadow. Now, normally I put concealer and foundation on first, and then I put my eyeshadow on. But this time I'm going to go ahead and put shadow on first because I'm going to be using a lot of dark colors. So I went through all my palettes, and these are the ones that spoke the most to me on creating a really beautiful jeweled eye look. The first one is the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. I'm gonna work with these subtle peaches and terracotta orange colors. And then I'm going to build up in the corner these more rosy mauve chocolate tones. And, and lastly, I'm gonna go in with the Natasha Denona Chromium Liquid Eyeshadow in the color Infra Nude to pop right in the center for the cut crease pop effect. For this look, I'm gonna start with the MAC 221 Eyeshadow Brush. And the goal here is to do a sunset effect. So I'm gonna go in light, through the brow bone area. I'm gonna go in medium as I move down and then dark as I head into the crease. And to start, I'm gonna go ahead and grab light peach flesh tone color. And I'm just gonna go back and forth right on that brow bone. I'm not up here and I'm not in the crease. I'm right on that brow bone. If you take a look at my wrist, I'm doing a windshield wiper type effect. I'm not doing this. I'm really staying nice and controlled over that eye area and just using my wrist to go back and forth. Once I have that down, I can go in and take it a little bit further out. And I love using a light color first because this kind of helps you trace out the shape right in the beginning. You're gonna pull it right out to the edge here. And as you can see, I actually made my eyebrow a bit longer too to match the exaggerated shape that I'm creating. So from here, I'm going pretty much out to the temple area. So the goal here is to match that shadow that we're putting down to the outer edge of the brow. I switched palettes. This is the Lila palette. And I'm grabbing just a bit of that warm kind of mauve rose color. It's got a little bit of brown in it, but it's got some rose tones to it too. So it's just, nice and neutral with a bit of a pop. Now I'm going to go a bit below that peach tone that I just put down. Same brush, same motion with my wrist. Now if you want more drama, all you have to do is take every color that I'm using and just use a brighter color or a deeper color and you'll get more of a bold look. Okay, now we're going to go deeper and brighter. Let's head to the next color. This is where the jewel or pop effect starts to come to play. So I'm using the same MAC 221 brush. I'm cleaning it off. I have a little rag down here that's great for wiping my brush off. And I'm gonna go in and grab this beautiful bright red color here. All right, from there, I'm going lower now. So we're just bringing everything down each time we place a shade down. I'm just going right into that crease with this third shade. I 
I'm gonna go in now with my fourth color, grabbed my Lila palette. I'm gonna grab this dark purple color. Same brush, just wiping it off, the MAC 221. I'm going in now, it's dark purple. I'm gonna go over that red color, but I'm trying to be very precise here and just create a line in that socket. All right, so here is the first step. It's a bit messy, but that's okay because we're gonna clean everything up and refine it at the end. So I've got the Tom Ford concealing pen and I'm gonna go ahead now and pop that right in the center because I'm trying to create a very bright pop of color here. This is gonna create that cut crease, vibrant jewel toned effect. It creates basically high contrast with the makeup. So very dark against the light. Take your finger and blend. Taking now my MAC 217 brush and just blending out those edges so that it's seamless transition. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and use the Chromium Liquid Shadow Infra Red. It's a nice kind of holographic brightening effect to the eye area. I'm gonna go right on top of that concealer. All right, I'm going back to my Lila palette and I'm grabbing this shimmery white pink color. I'm gonna go right in the middle here and tap that on the center. Now I'm getting the contrast that I need. As you see, I've got this bright color with the deeper color, but I wanna go ahead and touch up the edges. So I'm gonna go back in with the color that I used from the Sunset palette. I'm using now my Sonia G Working Pro brush, grabbing a bit of that red, and I'm gonna pop that right in the outside corner here. And the goal is to stay in that pocket, and then you can bring it around the edge of that cut crease lightly bringing it towards that bright pop of color in the center of the lid because we want to have a nice transition. Grabbing a clean brush, this is the MAC 217 again, and it's a clean brush and I'm just blending those two colors together so that there is a seamless transition between the two colors. So basically you want the dark red, the white, and then in between will be kind of like a soft pink because the two colors have mixed together. Here's the darker color, the lighter color, and then this should be somewhere in between the two colors. I'm gonna grab this orange color from the Sunset palette and a little bit of that peach. I wanna go right on the top. I'm working all the way up to the brow bone at this point, I'm at the very edge of all the colors I placed down. So that way I can have a bit more of that sunset type of look. All right, let's get into the detail work now. So I'm gonna grab this color, which is the light pink pearly color from the Lila palette. And I'm gonna go ahead now and just place it in the center of that brow area up top. And then I'll carry it lightly over to each side. This next part is where you can go wild with the eyeliner. I'm skipping black in lieu of Blue Nui Chanel liner. I love this liner, I've been using it quite a bit, but I wanna create something a bit different. So I'm using more of a jewel toned bluish black rather than just black. I find it looks really pretty in photos to not use something that's so harsh. Now, of course, if you wanna use black, it's very graphic, it's very bold, do it. But I'm going deep, but a little bit bright as well and just line the heck out of underneath that eye area. Next, I'm gonna go underneath the lash line here and wiggle that liner all the way across the inner waterline. From there, I wet my brush. This is my Kevin Aquan small eyeshadow brush. I wet the tip a bit. I'm gonna go in with the Lila palette. I'm gonna grab this beautiful purple wine color that has a shimmer to it. I'm going right on top of the eyeliner, but I'm not going on the waterline. I want to keep that dark color close to the waterline and closest to my eye. So I'm kind of putting it right below the eyeliner. 
All right, from there, I'm gonna take my Chantecaille Ultra Slim Liquid Liner. This is great for doing detailed work. I'm gonna work off the side of the brush because I can create a really clean line that way and just move right on top of that lash line. If you work off the side of the brush and place it against the lash line, it's so much easier than trying to draw the line on. You can just work off the lash line and wiggle it across. It will do a lot of the work for you. All right, next let's go ahead and put some lashes on. I have my Velour lashes and these are very vavoom. It's great for this look. You don't want to go small. You wanna go big when it comes to the goddess bride look, especially because in photographs, if you do not put full lashes on, your makeup won't look balanced. So make sure you pick a really volumized full lash. It doesn't have to be super long, but make sure it's really volumized and thick and dark so that it really um, opens up the eye and creates a lot of definition. So I've got my velour lashes. I'm adding a bit of duo glue here to go with the eye look. Now I just pop these on the corner here. Wait till it dries a bit, place it. Okay, nice full lash. Now you can see a little bit of the white still because the glue's still drying, but it will completely dry down and be clear. And then I'll add a bit of mascara to the base of the lash so that we make sure that it's nice and black at the lash line. So let's go ahead and start with the complexion. I'm gonna start with the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Love, love, love this top 10 favorite products for brightening the skin overall, but especially under the eye area. I live for this. All right, so I'm gonna go in a little under the eye. As you can see, I am not being light-handed here. You guys are used to my applications being very light-handed. This is not the look for light-handed. This is like airbrushed, photoshopped type of makeup. The Goddess Bride does not play. I'm placing it wherever I want to create a lot of light on the face. So although it's meant to be used all over, I'm using it and touch spotting just areas. So I put it around here because I want this to be the main focus. And then I have a lot of shadowing um, just from natural creases and expressions around the face, which is around the mouth area. So usually all of our discoloration is right through here. All right, from there, I'm going to grab my Lingerie Depot Natural Perfection Foundation. I love this because it's dewy, but it creates a bit of a satin finish. So it looks really great with the eye look because it's not too dewy. We don't want something that's too shiny and sparkly because the eyes, once again, are the focus. So I want something that is kind of a satin matte finish, but a little bit of dewiness um, so that it balances out the eye look. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab about two and a half pumps of the foundation here. I've got my Real Techniques Makeup Sponge. I'm tapping that in to the back of my hand. I'm gonna go in now, just bounce that around the skin. And this bouncing motion just helps to get the product onto the skin, kind of move it all around. And then I'll go back in and press and roll, which is a technique used for buffing the makeup in so that it's not just sitting on like the top layer of the skin and looking heavy and cakey. turning this around so I can use the clean edge to pick up any excess product and just really create a seamless finish around under that eye area, especially under the eye area since the focus is really on the eyes. Um, you want the under eye area to look flawless because if you have any fallout or you have deeper lines or you have darker circles, um, we want that to be very bright since we want the focus to be on this part of the eye, not down here going back to where the foundation was and just blending out the edges here. All right, I'm going in now with my Bye Bye It Under Eye Concealer. This is waterproof, sweat proof, crease proof. It's anti-aging and full coverage. Grabbing a bit of that on the back of my hand here. Use my ring finger and warm it up. Love this concealer. It is so great for under the eye area. It's super full coverage, but not cakey and thick and heavy, which I love. I'm just using my ring finger and tapping that on under that eye area. All 
Go back in with my sponge now on the clean side. Just tap that on the skin here. All right, I'm gonna go in with my Natasha Denona. I need a nude glow highlighter. This highlighter is so gorgeous, you guys. It's probably one of my top three favorite highlighters. It just looks beautiful, beautiful on the skin. I'm gonna apply it with my Kevin Aquan contour brush. Grab a bit of that here. I'm just working around the skin here in a C shape. So I placed it here and I'm working outward at the edges, working all the way around. I'm adding a tiniest, tiniest bit to the nose because I don't want that high beam effect where it looks like someone put little white dots on the skin. I just take a little bit and work on the edges of the nose. I go down the center and then I work on each side of the nose here. The idea is a subtle glow so that as I move, you just see a light shift of color moving across the face. And whenever it's left over, I take a little bit and dust under the eye to give a nice brightening effect. All right, let's go ahead and get out the new NARS Orgasm Beach Palette. Absolutely love, love this palette. So gorgeous. This is perfect for this look. I'm going to use this as a contour and a blush. So let's start with the Kevin Aquan blush brush. I'm gonna grab this deep color here go right into the hollow of that cheek and I'm barely barely touching the skin at this point because I'm kind of just lightly laying it down um, this is very pigmented and I don't want to have too much color on the skin right away it makes it harder to blend remember it's easier to add than to take away so I lightly place the color kind of get an idea of the shape that I want on the face it's kind of like tracing or sketching first on paper kind of just putting the colors lightly down once I feel like the color is good, I can go in with a bit more and create more definition. So I'm working from the top of the ear to the outer eye. That little pocket right there is where you want to place the bronzer. Once it's down, then you're going to flick it up. And that gives some lifting and sculpting to the skin. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take the same brush. I wiped it off and I'm going to mix these two colors here. This is a really pretty soft peach color and then a little bit of that pink color. And from there, I'm going to lightly tap this on. See if I feel good about the color, which I do. Don't go up where the highlighter is. want to leave that alone. Once we have that down, go ahead and take whatever's left over and lightly. When I mean lightly, I'm going to show you guys here. I'm never collapsing the brush onto the skin. I'm just lightly placing it and then feathering it and using really small little um, circular motions or even little flicks so that I'm placing the color down and kind of giving it an airbrush effect without doing big swirls. Powder I'm going to use to set this look is the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder in Glow. This is a nice, light, subtle shimmer, so it'll give a beautiful look to the skin as well as highlight and complement the eye look. Here's the lid. I take a very little bit. That's even too much. <laughs> take the brush that comes with it, which I love. This is the Laura Mercier Glow Powder Brush. I'm going to tap it in and then swirl it. And what that will do, it'll load the brush so that it's not sitting on top of these hairs. You want it to really be inside of this part, which is the ferrule of the brush. So that way it doesn't get chalky and heavy. When I have it at this point, I'll tap it with my wrist here, or you can use the lid to tap it and see how there's hardly any powder on there. That's what we want. That way it doesn't get cakey and heavy and sit in pores and texture and wrinkles and that sort of thing. So less is more. So from there, I love the curve of this brush. I can go into the jawline and work up. And once I get to this cheek area, I just pat it on lightly and move up and around. And the reason I do that is I don't want to create any powder inside textures on the skin, especially the pores around my cheeks. So I kind of just pat it on and then I'll lightly feather or work down with the tip of the brush. And that helps to kind of basically soften or blur any kind of pores or texture. 
All right, let's get started with lips. I'm gonna use the Chanel Rose Frambois. It's a beautiful pinkish red color. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace the edge of my lip here. As you can see, I'm feathering that color into the center of the lip because I don't want any harsh lines. So I lightly trace around the outside of the lip and then I go back in and feather that color into the middle of the lip and feather it all the way to the edge. So that way it looks like there is no harsh lines. It just almost looks like a lipstick's been put on the lips. Now lip liner is so important for this look and for all looks when it comes to weddings because what lip liner does, it's a drier formula and it will help the longevity of your lipstick or your glosses. Basically it sets a base, it grabs other pigments and kind of holds on to those pigments. So it will help to create a fuller lip as well as help with longevity. All right, so here's the lip liner. Let's go ahead now and put on a beautiful lipstick to go on top. Now I'm not trying to match my lipstick to my lip liner. I wanted a brighter color so that it kind of gives that jewel toned effect. So whatever lipstick I put on now will have kind of a bright effect to it. So since this is the goddess look, I wanna go ahead and use something very goddess-like. I grabbed my Louis Vuitton lipstick. This is in the color Terrera. These lipsticks are so beautiful. They have so much weight. They just feel like jewelry on your lips. And that is the look we're going for, a jewel look. I'm gonna go ahead now and add a lip gloss. Lastly, I'm gonna put the gloss on, and this is the Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss in 766. This is the most beautiful berry gloss. I just love this color. So gorgeous. All right. So here is the look. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this side and then I'm going to add a bit of a cool headpiece to bring it all together. All right, here we have the goddess bride. Now, normally I would have more gold type of pieces with this look because goddess to me symbolizes a lot of gold, but I only had pearls and kind of jeweled rhinestone diamond like jewelry. So I had to go with that, but I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed the look. Of course, feel free to make the look work for you. That doesn't mean you have to go this dark. If you want, you could do the exact same application techniques, but just use a lighter hand or different colors and make it your own. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. The next video in this series, which is the final video, is Mother of the Bride and Bridesmaids. I'll be going over several tips and tricks for those of you who are looking to help your bridesmaids and for Mother of the Bride and Mother of the Groom. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Of course, if you have any questions, please reach down to me below. And if you want to support True Voyage, the best way to do that is to use affiliate links and subscribe. And of course, leave a comment and hit that like button. All right, everyone, I will see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. See you soon. Bye.